Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Yay! Okay, hey, everybody. Can y'all hear me? All right, perfect. I hope you guys are doing good this evening. <laughs> so we were having a really dope conversation in the Telegraph. And um, I've just been noticing, like, you know, a few agendas. And I was like, you know what? It's late night. I feel like talking right now about this and getting this kind of off my chest. I'm like, well, let's turn this into a whole green room session and see what you guys think about all this. So earlier, I had posted um, on the Discord about these two articles. So somebody had sent it over in Telegraph. And I remember last week seeing the whole situation with the kids in Chicago. And basically, the first article that came out last week was stating that Chicago makes it mandatory for schools with fifth grade to provide condoms. And so it triggered a huge debate. This was on July 12th. A lot of people were really upset about this. I definitely felt a way. But I was like, you know what? I don't even feel like talking about it right now. It's just one more thing. So then fast forward to this evening, there's a new article that's now come out on the Daily Wire had posted it. And basically in that article, it's stating that um, there's a school district out here in Wisconsin. So both of these schools in the Midwest. So what the school wants to do basically is to provide students with sexually explicit books for all third graders. And in those materials, they're also going to tell kids how to use sexually explicit apps. And this is just really disturbing. And so one of the sex apps that these kids are going to learn about is Grindr. And I find it very interesting that that's the, you know, the specific app. And they were saying in the article how the sex app works is you upload a tiny picture of yourself onto the app. The app works with your location. The app tells you who the nearest homosexuals are. Then you can chat with them because they are near. It's easy for you to meet up with them. I don't understand what in God's green earth, you know what I'm saying? Like, why do third graders need to learn about Grindr? Why do they need to know that there are, I don't care if it's heterosexuals, why do they need to know that somebody is sexually available for them in their vicinity? So a lot of this stuff just really got, you know, really got my tin hat tingling. And we were having a really dope conversation, um, me and Malachi and the others. And I think what people are not even looking at this is how deep this goes. And I'm not trying to be graphic when I, you know, talk about children, but let, let's, we're all adults here. When you think about two fifth graders, right, the average fifth grader is between the age of 10 and 11, okay? Just biologically speaking, the average fifth grade boy cannot necessarily put on a condom. The average fifth grade girl's body is not necessarily ready for sex. Most fifth grade girls cannot get pregnant. Granted, there's been stories of 10 year olds getting pregnant, but that's very rare. The average fifth grade girl cannot get pregnant. So what is she protecting herself from? Now you could say STDs, but the average fifth grader has not been out here just having sex all willy nilly. So a fifth grader is not likely to have an STD. So what I'm thinking is that This is for adults. This is grooming children. So that way, when an adult or older person approaches them, they're going to be less apprehensive because they've already been groomed through the school to think that, oh, this is safe. This is something that's going to help me. This is something that I need. Because when people have sex that young, right, I remember being in elementary school and I remember one of my friends, I'm not going to say her name. But I remember her telling us, and she was very developed, like, you know, I was skinny mini in elementary school, didn't really know anything about sex. But I remember her telling us in sixth grade that she was having sex. You know, she was developed. She had boobs. She had, you know, a booty on her. She looked, she didn't look like a fifth grader. She looked more like an eighth grader, like her body wise, right? And I remember her telling us this. 
And, you know, we're little kids on the playground and I'm just like, I'm not even understanding what she means by she has sex in the closet, you know, but I remember her telling us this in the sixth grade that she has sex already. She feels grown, you know, all this stuff. And, you know, as children, you don't even know how to compute that. So I, those are one of the memories that I just kind of forgot about. And we were speaking about it tonight. And I've always thought about it throughout the years. Like fifth grade is so young. Who was sleeping with this? Well, sixth grade. Who was sleeping with this sixth grader? Most likely was not another sixth grade boy because the average boys in fifth and sixth grade are very immature. You know what I'm saying? They're running around. They're more into sports. They're not really into girls at that age. Some are, but the average, they're not. They're more hanging out with their guy friends, you know, playing football, things like that. They're not really thinking heavily about trying to have sex. Now, porn is definitely pushed onto kids a lot more early these days than back when I was in, you know, fifth, sixth grade. But with that being said, I feel like a lot of this is really grooming children to want to have sex with older people because the average fifth grader, they're not having sex with each other. For a fifth grade girl to understand about sex and what happens, it's usually going to be with the older guy with somebody older than her who's more experienced, maybe he's in eighth or ninth grade, maybe it's a whole adult. For a fifth grade boy to really understand sex, most likely his experience is going to be with somebody older as well. An older female, maybe in eighth or ninth grade, maybe in an adult. This is not for fifth graders to be hooking up and having sex. This is a grooming process to get these kids to let down their guard So when older people come at them for sex, they're not going to see anything wrong with it because it's been pushed in school that as long as you have a condom and the school has given you a condom and somebody older than you comes at you with a condom, it's okay. So it's just really disturbing like when you really think about all this stuff that's being pushed on the kids. So then, like I said, then we get this new article today um, where they're talking about providing third graders with sexually explicit books and sex apps. So Malachi was really upset about this. So Malachi, you can go ahead and unmute your mic if you want to go ahead and jump on in here. Hey, can y'all hear me? Yeah, we can hear you perfectly. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. I hope everybody is doing good as well. Yes, y'all, it's late, but you know what? We had to get into this shit. And that's exactly what it is. It was a bullshit. Now, I don't know if y'all can hear it in my voice, but I'm very, I'm pissed mm-hmm. off. You know, I'm just going to keep it out of the with y'all. I'm very pissed. And I mean, f- first of all, I am, a, I, I don't have any children. I'm 23 years young. <laughs> don't need no children <laughs> right now. But um, I do have a little sister and I have a, two, two nephews, actually. And I have a niece. Um, my little sister is 13. My oldest nephew is 10. He just turned 10. No, he just turned 11. My bad. And my um, other nephew, he just turned five. And my niece is two. And it just, it upsets me because the children, they're not safe. You know, mm-hmm. um, my family, we don't play that shit. You know, we don't play that whole pedophile type shit. So, yeah, like, I know that within the family, they're safe. But that's just this little bubble, you know, the outside world is so much bigger and right. I'm just, I'm, I'm scared for them, you know? And so like, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm, I'm already like really pissed off and emotional, you know, about that. But this whole trying to tie the LGBTQ plus community to everything concerning pedophilia, that's been going on for years and I am so fucking over it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said in Telegram, they made sure to specifically point out that one of the apps they will be teaching the children about is Grinder, but then next to Grinder they said other sex apps. So that makes me wonder. Well, shit, what the what the fuck is these other sex apps? Are they all supposed to be gay apps? Or is um fucking um what, what what's the one where um they use the devil as as promo? Hello Cupid or some shit like that? I think is, Tinder. Is that- Mm-hmm. Is that one of them? Is Tinder one of them? Is I I don't know. Um, 
ChristianMeagle.com, one of them. Like, why are y'all only specifically pointing out Grinder? You know, why right. y'all? Why is it that every time there's something concerning pedophilia going on, y'all always tie the community? It's already bad enough. The community deals with that already. Believe mm-hmm. it or not, they do. And it only makes it worse when shit like this happens. So that really upset me because when their article was, um, and I believe it was RG who sent it, when their mm-hmm. article was sent, that's the first thing I noticed was this big ass rainbow flag. And I'm like, why the fuck do they got this big ass rainbow flag in there? No. Stop trying to tie pedophilia to the community. Right. Like, and that's what I was saying. Like, I feel like they're definitely trying to make a divide where it's like the straight community versus the LGBT. And that's what I was saying. Like, I wish that more people in the LGBT were vocal against this because what they're trying to do is make it seem like everybody in the LGBT is for deviant behavior towards children. Because why would they put a big old rainbow flag in the middle of that article and then only talk about Grindr, a gay app, but not talk about other explicit apps, you know what I'm saying, that are geared towards straight people? So right. they're definitely pushing an agenda. Because because my thing is this. Grinder isn't just a gay app. It's specifically a gay male app. But they didn't say that they're only doing this for little boys. They said third graders, boys and girls. Mm-hmm. So I mean, you can't teach a little girl about Grinder Because Grinder isn't designed for females. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but is Grindr on child... <laughs> I, I, I've never been on Grinder, but I've always heard it was it's for gay men. That's what I've always heard. It, it's only for gay men. So my thing is, you can even teach it to a little girl if you wanted to. So no, right. they're, they're specifically pointing out they put that rainbow flag in that um, article picture for a reason. They made sure to p- specifically point out Grinder, and I'm sorry if I'm not saying certain words clear. I'm I'm still like really upset right now. They specifically put Grinder in there for a reason, and it's to just continuously tie pedophilia to the community. And I'm right. really sick and tired of it. And what's more disturbing is, like I said, I don't care if this is a gay app or a straight app. Why does a, a third grader need to let anybody know that they're sexually available on an app that's geared for adults? It doesn't make sense. Why do they need to know that there's you know, sexually available adults, gay or straight, near them. For what reason? Why does a third grader need to speak to anybody on Grindr? It does not make sense. And a lot of these schools are pushing, you know, just these really crazy agendas. And when you speak up against it, then they want to coin you homophobic. Or people in your community, if you're LGBT and you stand up against this, then you're going against the community. And it's like, no, it's not about going against Right is right and wrong is wrong. And none of this stuff is normal. And anybody with a conscience, anybody, regardless of your sexual orientation, should not want children exploited in this manner. Exactly. And this is a point that I have made because, um, well, I don't know if RG was going to try to speak tonight, but um, she had made a really good point inside of the um, tele- in, in Telegram. And I agree with her. And I told her, like, you know, this is the thing, like, it's not abnormal for little boys to like little boys, nor is it abnormal for little girls to like little girls. But the thing is, they aren't going to go around here trying to fuck each other. At the most, they're probably going to do something innocent, like hold hands or some shit like that. They're not going to go around, ooh, let's go to the playground and have sex. Absolutely not! Right. Miss me with the bullshit. No, y'all are trying to teach these children. It's already bad enough. It's already bad enough that you know, sex has it's always low key been in children's media in the form of innuendos. So mm-hmm. it's already bad enough that that was the case. Like, go back and watch all those old cartoons, Cow and Chicken. Um, she, it's a, it's a lot of cartoons. <laughs> Not Cow and Chicken. Hell <laughs> yes, Cow and Chicken. <laughs> you watch a lot of these old cartoons. And your adult mm-hmm. years, you're like, oh my god, how did this shit? Even running <laughs> Stimpy, there's a viral clip of running Stimpy, oh and it my looks god. like Stimpy is like ramming Ren in the ass with a saw. 
Yes, yes I saw that. We yeah, we never even looked at it like that. But when you see stuff through a dog eyes, it's like, damn, they've been grooming us for years, and we ain't even know it. it can, we really can go back to Disney. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, absolutely. They they really truly have, and it's already bad enough that that was the case. But now they're just like blatantly putting it to little children, and you know, I was one of those third graders, child. I I, I knew about you know sex and all that, that that all that type of shit. I didn't have no business no business knowing about it, but I did. But at right. the same time. The shit wasn't just blatantly thrown in my face like that, like how it is now with these children. Right. You know, it, it, it's a shame and it's sad and it makes me afraid, you know. Now, and somebody like, in the chat, somebody in the chat, Ashton just said, my 11 year old niece told me she's bisexual. The newer generation of kids know way more than we did as children. And that's the thing. A lot of them know way more because it's being force fed to them. You know, at, at a certain age, you weren't even thinking about sex, but they're constantly being bombarded with sex. And, you know, and I don't care, like I said, if it's a man and a woman, a man and a man, a woman and a woman, they're constantly being bombarded with that. So now you have, I've heard kids as young as eight time out there bisexual. You can't even spell it, <laughs> you know, <laughs> you, you can't even spell it. But because, you know, it's been, it's just been, constantly thrown in their face that's what they automatically think that they are could they be absolutely but then they also could not be you know what i'm saying right so it's just it's, it's just crazy like just how much stuff is just being thrown in children's faces at this young age continuously but this was like the final straw for me like this is just way too much you know first the condoms and like i said a majority of fifth graders are between the ages of 10 and 11. The average fifth grade boy does not produce semen that can get somebody pregnant. On right. average, I'm not saying it hasn't happened, but there's not a lot of 10 year old fathers running around this world, okay? The average fifth grade girl is can't get pregnant. Not saying it's never happened, but we're not seeing, you know what I'm saying, a bunch of 10 year olds knocked up walking through the mall. So I could see giving them condoms once they get to junior high because the average girl gets their first period like around 12, 13. You know, boys start to make semen that can get girls pregnant around that age. I can even, even though I think that's young, I could even see that because their body produces those particular hormones where they can have kids at that young of age. But in fifth grade, nah, y'all are setting them up. You're setting them right. up. And and that's why we, we were having the um condom debate. I said I can understand high schools, you know, as giving out condoms to children as early as ninth grade because that's around the age, you know, your hormones kicking in, and you can, you know, the young men can produce um semen, and you know, young women are uh, at that time able to um you know carry ch children. So it makes sense right. to give out condoms to you know ninth graders. I mean, yeah, you don't want them going around here having sex and you should tell them not to but nine times out of ten they don't have sex so might as well just give them the condoms so they can do it safely but mm -hmm. to fifth graders no to third graders yeah. no it's 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 really truly sad and then on top of that you have to factor this in too adult media in general not even necessarily like porn but just adult media in general is so accessible nowadays. Look yeah. at how all the little children were doing the WAP dance on TikTok. Or dancing mm -hmm. to, you know, artists that they shouldn't be listening to. Look at the, the little boy had an NBA Youngboy themed birthday party. But listen to all the shit the NBA Youngboy talk about his music. Right. And the parents so, condone it. He didn't, buy them, yeah. the, that, he didn't buy that entire party himself. The parents exactly. provided it. Mm -hmm. So it's already bad enough that some a lot of these children, they some of them are being brought up by their parents to know about this stuff early enough, and it's sad because when things aren't going right in the household, school is supposed to be that one safe haven. If you're getting right. abused, you're you're supposed to be able to have to go to school to report it. If if anything negative is going on in your household, school is supposed to be that safe haven. School is no longer the safe haven. That it's supposed to be. And yeah, you know, incidents always happen in school, but school was supposed to be a safe haven. But they're literally changing now. It's no longer a safe haven. No, it's not. 
I'm going to go ahead and bring up some more callers. We got a lot of people raising their hand. So let me go ahead and bring up RG. She's in the chat. My good sis, RG. Come on, girl. <laughs> Hi, how's everybody doing? We're doing good. How about you, sis? Good. A little bit disturbed with all these articles. Um, when I was talking to uh, Malachi earlier on Telegram, um, it's just really interesting. I was telling him how they always want to um, link this type of news or behavior to the LGBTQ plus community. Um, and I was, was telling Malachi, I was like, you know, I think the reason why they might do that is because they want to introduce that to kids at a very, very early age um, for them to feel comfortable, you know, with the whole grooming thing in the back of the mind um, that if like an older man, you know, wants to touch a younger kid for them to think it's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of like prepping the child kind of like, cause you know, like Malika was like Malika was saying earlier, like, you know, little kid, little boys aren't going to go around having sex with each other. Little third grade boys aren't going to have sex with each other. So who are they going to be prepping for? Why do they need to know in the apps where their nearest, uh, homosexual where they could find the nearest homosexual like what for you know it's right. really for adults yeah because these apps have an age limit last time exactly. i checked they claim it's it supposed to be 18 plus so why on earth does an eight-year-old need to know where to find their nearest sex partner it just doesn't make sense it doesn't it doesn't make sense at all and it's just it's disturbing and like how he was saying like you know, if you like little kids have crushes on their classmates and what's the most that they do? They just go around giggling like, oh, I have a crush on you or they might hold hands. And that's about it. But when you're talking about like sex, I feel like they're just preparing them. They're like trying to wake up sexuality in kids at such a young age. And it's for a reason. It's to get consent. It's, they're getting younger and younger. They're just mm. pushing them younger and younger kids and it's it's sick it's it's crazy and and schools out of out of all the places like should be should not be the places where this should be happening like at all that makes sense that and i know people have said that in you know prior that they are trying to lower the age of consent and you have a lot of people saying, well, kids nowadays are way more mature. You know, the girls look a lot older. The boys look a lot older. It's in the food. So because they're looking older, they're exposed to more. You know, these kids are exposed to mm -hmm. so much on social media and, and music and television and movies that they're almost like many adults. So because they're right. like many adults, it shouldn't be a big deal if I hook up with a 13-year-old because a lot of these 13-year-olds, they... Also, you know, what I'm saying we'll approach adults and be like, oh, he's fine or she's fine. You know, you'll have young kids who will try who will try and get with older adults. But regardless of the situation, the adult is always in the wrong. I don't care if that kid is telling you that you're the finest thing since sliced bread. That is a kid. You cannot take exactly. a kid up on that, you know, per the law. But I believe they are trying to get the laws changed and, you know, OK, this type of behavior because. Look at like all the things that people like R. Kelly and, you know, well, I'll mainly say R. Kelly because Harvey Weinstein wasn't that with a bunch of young people. But let's just take R. Kelly, for example, you know, all the young girls that he had been grooming and been with, you know, forever. And this was like the norm back then. Even when I watched the Nivea interview with, um, with uh, what's her name, Candy, I don't know if you got a chance to check that out. In that interview, Nivea was talking about how she had sex with her manager how he had been, you know, they were in a full-blown relationship. Nivea yeah. had started, you know, sleeping with him when she was 14. You know, yeah. and her manager was like twice her age. He was like in his late 30s, sleeping with a 14-year-old, you know, and Candy was like, yeah, you know, that was the norm back then. And unfortunately, it really was. You know, I can't tell you how many grown men used to pull up to our high school to pick up, you know, just different girls, you know, sophomores and freshmen and True. And nobody, like, you know, people are like, oh, you know, it's kind of creepy, but then it was just kind of the norm. Right. You know? Nobody, so nobody what R. Kelly was anything. doing, 
Yeah, nobody said anything. People yeah. knew that they were, you know, 15 year olds jumping in this damn 30 year olds car, you know, after school and things like that. <laughs> and I think it was more like a dirty secret in the 90s. Like it was wrong, but it was just the norm, especially like in in the hood and, and things like that. And then there became this big push like, no, this is wrong. We're going to start jailing people and, you know, start holding people accountable. And I think now they're trying to twist it where, OK, let's just lower the age. So that way these men can't get in trouble. And these kids obviously want it because they're more grown, because I just don't see why this is constantly being pushed. I mean, day in, day out, it's like another story. And these kids just keep getting younger and younger. Yeah. It's it's crazy. No kid should have to even think about anything like that. You know, like never like kids should just be kids. They should be learning their ABCs and they should just play with friends. And it's just there's no reason for this. There's no reason. Mm hmm. Somebody said in the chat, Candy said a lot of girls back then used to date older men. And someone commented they didn't date older. They were abused. Mm. Yeah. And I, I think. 100%. Yeah. I think sometimes we need to change the vocabulary. And I've been guilty of that, too, you know, because you, you that's the era that we grew up in. So right. it's like, that's my homegirl's man, even though he's 30 and my homegirl's 15. That's her man. And yeah. when you're older and we really look at it, no, that wasn't her man. That was her abuser. Exactly. That wasn't OK. You know, yeah. So I think as a society, we do have to change some of our vernacular towards these relationships. Um, somebody else in the chat was saying here that they feel like it will only mo that it will mostly have hurt children of color, given how they are already perceived as older than they are. People will use this as an excuse to sexually assault children of color. I definitely mm -hmm. agree. That is a great and then, point. yeah, that is a really good point. That's and then somebody point. else was saying too. That isn't it funny that how all these celebrities have recently been caught with younger people like remember Kyle Massey, he had to turn himself in last week. Mm -hmm. You know, he was messing and, and sending nudes to that little girl. And then we had the whole Drake Bell situation and just so many celebrities over the past few years, especially from like the Disney camp, have been caught with younger people. So maybe that's why they're also trying to do that. Because yeah. now celebrities mm -hmm. are getting caught up in this. And, you know, once their meal tickets get caught up in, in scandals, that can just destroy the industry. It can destroy that entire brand. So if we can change the laws, now it won't affect Hollywood as mad. Exactly. That is a great yeah, point. I feel like they all link. They all link together. Oh, yeah. You know, like mm -hmm. these people are going to get, like, you know, they'll go to jail or, the, you know, they'll spend time. But it'll be like, what? A short time and then they'll be out again it's like it's also i think to condition the public you know you hear these stories and you're like okay well you know the punishment isn't so bad so you know it's whatever right, right. so let me go ahead we have lots of hands up so i'm glad we got like we want to talk let me bring up on the stage tone dog tone get ready to come up on the stage come on down come on down hey hello Hey, how are you? I'm great. Uh, thank you for having me on the panel. You know what I'm saying? I just Definitely. wanted to just, you know, say about the whole article about the LGBT and the Grinder app. As for myself, I'm a transgender man. And I would say from experience for the past three years, I would say there has been like a little covert slash agenda with the LGBT community with like mm -hmm. the link of like pedophilia. Because I've been on the internet since, like, 2005. And since, like, 2014, I don't know if you guys have ever been on Twitter, but there would be a lot of these trolls that would make, like, these fake Twitter accounts trying to pass, like, pedophilia as, like, a community in the LGBT community. And they've been doing mm. this type of thing since 20, uh, 2014. And I've been keeping an eye on it. So as, like, somebody else said on the panel that, like, there's, like, a type of, like... Uh, propaganda slash agenda to make it seem like LGBT people, especially trans people, are like some like pedophilic creeps or some shit like that. And, you know, I try to, you know, put this on the table with other LGBT members, and they usually say, you know, I'm homophobic, I'm a bigot, and, you know... I'm and that's your own community. Shit. Yeah. Right. So, so, 
since that happened, that's why I don't put on my profile that I'm trans or I'm LGP, you know, but only my close significant others and friends know. But that's the reason why it causes division in the community when people like myself in the community be like, hey, y'all, you know, there's some bullshit in the mix. Y'all need mm-hmm. to see what's going on instead of worrying about, you know, all these social cues and shit. Because the real, this is the true shit right here. It's like divide and conquer. They're just trying to, like, make everybody look bad, you know you know what I'm saying? Right. But like as for Grinder, Grinder used to be for like everyone back in the day. Somebody could correct me when I'm wrong. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but it used to be for everybody back in the day. But that's all I wanted to say. So No, you made my- some really good points and I appreciate that because it's like when I have conversations with I'm talking about like my personal friends that I've known for years that I'm very close with in my real life who are LGBT and they're against all of this stuff. But to let, like, social media tell it, every gay person is behind this foolishness. And the average gay person is not co-signing this nonsense. That's why I feel like, like you were, like Tom was saying, it's a divide and conquer to make it look like these people are perverted, they're coming after our children, when most people do not co-sign this. But it seems like the crazy ones in the LGBT just have the loudest voices. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.